though I don't think I talk about it as often as everybody thinks. Alchemy is something I've discussed a decent amount on this channel. I've discussed it enough that any time a reference to alchemy is made in a game, movie, or TV show, people want my perspective on it. As of late, people have been feverishly asking for an extensive analysis of alchemy's influence on Elden Ring. Though I did reference one alchemical concept in my Elden Ring mythology video on the ancient dragons and the crucible, that of the Prima Materia, there are a vast number of other examples left to go through. Today, I will be going through all the references that I and others have picked up on thus far. My first exhibit will be a video that a lot of you have been sending me. The video is called Elden Ring is an Allegory for Alchemy by a YouTuber named Xyostorm. He has been doing wonderful videos on Elden Ring as of late, and this video is no exception. Though I don't agree with everything that is said in this video, the majority of it is very intriguing and worth your time. I will quickly go through all of the primary claims made in that video and then add extra detail where possible. I will start off with just two small things that I disagree with. First, Xyostorm links the alchemical symbol of the Ouroboros with Rykard and the God Devouring Serpent. I don't think this is an apt comparison. The Ouroboros is a word that derives from Ancient Greek, translating specifically to tail devouring. The God Devouring Serpent does not bite their own tail. Although I will say Xyostorm's invoking of the Ouroboros symbol is appropriate. I just think he's attributing it to the wrong thing in Elden Ring. In my opinion, the alchemical Ouroboros represents the form and function of the Crucible, which I talked about in my aforementioned video. In alchemy, the Ouroboros represents the state of the universe before it came into being, when every aspect of life was unified in one cosmic seed. The Ouroboros symbolizes this state because the snake remains alive, though it is simultaneously killing itself. The alchemists gave this state of the universe a name, one that I mentioned a minute ago, Prima Materia, which is Latin for First Matter. Various item descriptions in Elden Ring give the Crucible the same attributes. Though the Crucible is not a literal snake devouring its tail, its function is the exact same as the Prima Materia. I'm surprised that Xyostorm didn't mention this, particularly because he seems to be quite knowledgeable about alchemy. The equating of the Ouroboros with the Prima Materia is as introductory a concept in alchemy as knowledge of the four elements. This leads me to my second and final criticism of Xyostorm's video. He equates Elden Ring's version of the Prima Materia, the Crucible, with the entirety of the Lands Between. You could technically say that the Lands Between are a reflection of the Crucible, because everything that is in the Lands Between was once mixed together in the Crucible. However, that does not make them the same thing. That would be like pointing to the seed of a tree and calling the seed a tree. But aside from those two things, I absolutely loved everything else about Xyostorm's video. Not only did he pick up on things that blew my mind, it led me down a path to new discoveries that help explain so much more of Elden Ring's universe. Xyostorm's primary discovery is the similarities between certain images and concepts in Elden Ring and a 15th century alchemical text by a man named Sir George Ripley a text called the Ripley Scroll. On this scroll, Ripley outlined a recipe for the Philosopher's Stone. Now the Philosopher's Stone, of course, is the primary goal of alchemy, because it contains within it the elixir of eternal life. I would like to draw your attention to two images on this scroll. The first image is one we'll only spend a moment on. In the middle circle, you see Sir George Ripley being presented a book on alchemy by an ancient Egyptian sage named Hermes Trismegistus. The eight circles surrounding the middle circle represent the eight steps required to create the first part of the Philosopher's Stone. Xyostorm noticed a similarity between this image and the shapes in the fire giant's eye. At first, I thought that maybe the nine circles in the eye represented the nine realms in Norse mythology, given the numerous references to Norse mythology that are already in the game. 
Now, I'm leaning more towards Xylestorm's interpretation because of what we see in the second image. Here, we see seven men pouring in seven different ingredients into an alchemical bath. In the bath are a man crowned by the sun, a woman crowned by the moon, and a tree stretching upward. Though Xylestorm does not say this outright, I think he was implying a similarity between this image and the placement of the divine towers around the Erd Tree and the seven shards of the Elden Ring. This similarity becomes all the more compelling when you consider what the man and woman are attempting to do in the alchemical bath. They are trying to unify into one being, into the alchemical rebus. A man and a woman unified inside one body is obviously similar to the characters Marika and Radigan. Radigan, of course, was split off from the body of Marika. Now, let me expand upon the rebus. In order to create the Philosopher's Stone, or something approaching the same level of divinity, it is necessary to unify opposite elements. The Rebus has repeatedly been identified with the Philosopher's Stone and its sacred coincidence of opposites because it is a hermaphroditic being, a union of the opposite sexes and genders. As for why the man and the woman are designated by the sun and the moon, this reflects another tendency of the alchemists, to project masculine and feminine qualities onto the outside world. There are two prominent examples of this. One, of course, is attributing male and masculine to the sun and female and feminine to the moon. The other example of this is attributing male and masculine to gold and female and feminine to silver. Now get ready, this is where I am going to start blowing your minds. There are two Latin words that are used to designate this union of male and female, gold and silver, and sun and moon. Those words are Sol and Luna. Quickly, before I explain the relevance of Sol and Luna to Elden Ring, I will point out that there is another game made by the makers of Elden Ring that references this sacred alchemical union, Dark Souls 2. In that game, there are two locations known as Belfry Sol and Belfry Luna. The item description for the Bellkeeper's Seal in that game explains the bells that are found in both belfries. Quote, the twin bells symbolize the bond between two lovers who can never be united. Two lovers of opposite sexes longing to be united into one whole. Back to Elden Ring. The union of Saul and Luna is referenced in a couple of ways. There is Castle Saul, which is found in the mountain tops of the giants. There, you can find the item known as the Eclipse Shodel. The item's name and description, of course, reference the crossing of the moon in front of the sun which is a certain type of union. The union of Saul and Luna via gold and silver is something referenced a number of times in Elden Ring. There's the full moon crossbow, the inseparable sword, but most importantly, the twinned armor. The twinned armor, decked out in both gold and silver, references the twins Darian and Devon, both of whom are also known as D. The twins are described as being of two bodies and two minds, but one single soul. Then, of course, there's the matrimonial bond between Radigan and Ranala. Radigan represents the gold in order, and Ranala represents the full moon, which is associated with silver. I pointed out the proof for this in my video on Rani the Witch. One of the many pieces of proof I provide in that video includes the alchemical symbol for silver which is the moon. There is one more mind-blowing detail that I will conclude with, but before I get to that, I need to give you an important piece of qualifying information. Alchemy, obviously, is not science. It was a religious tradition built around the projecting of subjective values onto the material world. This caused alchemic theory to become very inconsistent as a result leaving historians with the difficult job of trying to find a canonical interpretation. This holds true for the application of alchemy in the world of Elden Ring as well. For example, if you accept the similarities between the Ripley Scroll and Elden Ring, you might have deduced a link between the union of Saul and Luna by the tree, and the union of Radigan and Merica in the Erd Tree. However, the truth is a bit more complicated. 
Sir George Ripley didn't appear to link the element of silver with the moon or gold with the sun in his scroll. Rather, he equated the sun with sulfur and the moon with mercury. Moreover, Marika seems to be anything but friendly with the moon, given that she initially sent Radigan to take over the land of Lyurnia where Renala, queen of the full moon, resided. Plus, Radigan had children with Renala before he had children with Marika, which would naturally lead to some enmity between the two women. But despite these contradictions, this does not render the theory of alchemy's association with Elden Ring null and void. I will repair any doubt you may have in my theory by pointing to the aforementioned elements of sulfur and mercury. When Zio Storm pointed out George Ripley's association of these elements with the sun and the moon, I was confused. Normally, when sulfur and mercury are evoked in alchemy, they are evoked as a part of the Tria Prima, which is Latin for the Three Primes. According to the alchemist Paracelsus the Great, all of the universe is made up of the three primes, which are sulfur, mercury, and salt. These three elements, accordingly, correspond to the human soul, spirit, and body. In respect to the aforementioned philosopher's stone, one would only obtain it if the correct mixture of the three primes existed both within the human body and inside the stone when it was obtained. The alchemical journey was as much internal as it was external, after all. Now, George Ripley was around before Paracelsus instantiated the doctrine of the Three Primes, so the element of salt wasn't part of Ripley's process. But, because the Tria Prima is one of the more consistent alchemical doctrines, like the doctrine of Sol and Luna, I propose that From Software overrode Ripley's perception with Paracelsus's. Now, what is the evidence for this? It's the meaning of Marika's name. Marika is a Polish name that means of the sea or bitter. Now, what is bitter about the sea? Well, that would be salt. In the alchemical literature, the arcane salt from the Tria Prima has a number of symbolisms that are closely connected with it, such as the bitterness of the sea. George Ripley commented on the trait of bitterness, saying that each thing in its first matter is corrupt and bitter. This includes the very first matter, the aforementioned Prima Materia. Just as the Prima Materia slash Crucible was responsible for birthing all life as we know it, all life on our planet originated from the sea. What this suggests is that though Zao Storm was right in equating Sulphur and Sol with Radigan, he might have been incorrect in attributing Mercury and Luna with Marika. Rather, Mercury would be associated with Lunar Queen Renala and Salt with Queen Marika. To repeat what I said before, alchemy is often inconsistent and confusing. Despite that fact, alchemy's appeal continues to this day because of its attempt to unify the material world with the world of morals and values. It's a form of poetry, disguised as a supposedly chemical procedure. The beauty of that poetry inspired its inclusion in several other works of fiction. If you would like to learn more about alchemy's extensive influence on video games, whether it's from Silent Hill, Xenosaga, The Witcher, consider checking out my video titled Video Game Academics Alchemy. I will link to that in the description box below. I refuse to believe that these allusions to alchemy within Elden Ring are all just coincidences, especially because previous games by the same game creators seem to have been inspired by alchemical concepts as well. Prior to Elden Ring's release, I demonstrated the potential links to alchemy in both the Dark Souls series and Bloodborne, and Elden Ring just continues to prove my intuitions. If you want to see how the Tria Prima influenced both Dark Souls and Bloodborne, go check out my video titled The Hidden Secrets of Dark Souls, The World Soul. If you want to see the mound of evidence linking the concept of the Philosopher's Stone to Bloodborne, check out my video titled Bloodborne's Hidden Secret to Becoming a God. Links to both videos will be in the description box below. 
Thank you very, very much for watching. Please make sure to hit that like button if you like this video, that helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe for more in-depth analysis of Elden Ring and a plethora of other forms of profound media. If you want to support the work that I do here, please consider supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar. I will put links to both of those in the description box below as well. Finally, I want to give some special thanks to Locksneed Martin and The Hour Man for reviewing the script for this video. Until my next video, I want to remind you as always and as per usual, stay yellow.